what made me accept the role as jury chair of the Frontiers Planet Prize is that the science has come so far on planetary boundaries and it was and is just such a phenomenal opportunity to be jury of a, of a jury of 100 scientific scholars to award the best science on integrated research on planetary boundaries. It was just a, just a confirmation of the importance of this science, but also a, a support for creating even more momentum on interdisciplinary science for how to be stewards of the planet for people's future. So in my mind, it's, it's part of the whole scientific journey, but also a pathway towards uh, a safe landing for humanity within a safe operating space. So it's really about scaling solutions as well. Well, in the future directions of the planet boundary science, I see several strands. Uh, one is the fundamental strand, which, which still has significant knowledge gaps, which is to you know, advance the very basic scientific framework of how to quantify and find the right control variables for all the nine planetary boundaries, to reduce the uncertainty ranges for the safe boundary setting, and to be even better at assessing the impacts of transgressing boundaries. I mean, one question, for example, is, can we at all deliver on the Paris Climate Agreement, even if we phase out coal, oil and gas, if we do not come back in within the safe boundaries on biodiversity, fresh water, land, nitrogen and phosphorus? So these are big questions of, of integrated, you know, how important is it to keep the resilience of the whole planet intact for us to be able to deliver economic development, but even to deliver on specific policy agreements, like for example, de delivering on the Paris Climate Agreements. So that's one, one set of science. The other part is, you know, how to govern the planet. The planet boundary science actually suggests that we now have to, you know, be able, 195 countries collectively together, uh, govern planet Earth like a global commons, and to do it in a way that, that, that works for, you know, national integrity, for democracy, for transparency and for equity. So that's a big chunk of interdisciplinary science. And the third line of, of science, uh, finally, in my view, is, is to find acceleration points. How can we, you know, we know today that the only way to get back in within a safe space for actually all the planetary boundaries is not a linear journey anymore. There's no way of just continuing incrementally to do the right things. We have to go through non-linear changes, basically social transformations where we start reducing global emissions by 7% per year. Today we increase them by 1% per year. We have to halt the loss of biodiversity now. We have to you know, fundamentally change the global food system from basically undermining planetary boundaries to um, not only coming back into the safe space, but also having multiplier effects on, on health, security and stability in societies. So, so that social transformations, the whole area on the basic science and being able to, um, to, to, to find governance mechanisms, I would see as three really important scientific strands moving forward. Now that the prize is in its second year, showing that this is truly a global collective effort with so many national academies of sciences, hundreds of scientists involved in, in, the, in the assessment, thousands of scientists involved in the submission of, of um, you know, nominations. It just shows a direction of travel. And the direction of travel in science is that we really need to ramp up even further our understanding of how do we actually uh, manage and govern the entire planet for people's future. And, and this is often in the past seen as almost like a buzzwordy trend line, you know, kind of a people planet agenda, but it isn't. Today it, it is razor sharp. We've come to a point where we are at risk of destabilizing the entire planet. We're losing the stability of the Earth system. Life support is being eroded at the global level. So there's no, there's no equity for any community. There's no poverty alleviation anywhere. There are no sustainable development goals successfully delivered upon anywhere unless we can keep the stability of the Earth system intact. And, and I think that is what is, is at the heart of the charge, that you cannot do 
some biodiversity research here and some climate research there and some water solutions here. That's also important. I mean, all that work also needs to happen. But here we're filling a gap. And the gap is we need this integrated holistic approach that definitely has science that matters locally, but that it should be possible to scale it and show what are the pathways to make this having impact, positive impact at the global level.